Hey guys, quick back Mr. Basics here. Let's talk about optical tweezers. Optical tweezer is an instrument that traps particle using high intensity laser. The most amazing part of optical tweezer is that they are used for the measurement of molecular forces. For example, force generated by RNA polymerase or DNA polymerase. This video is divided into three parts. First, we will see the phenomenon of optical tweezing. Second, we will see the instrumentation. And third, we will see the measurement of molecular forces. Here is how it works. The light has photons and photons have their own momentum. Now, let's say we have a transparent bead and it refracts the light towards the left. Because the bead is refracting the light towards the left, the momentum of photon is also directed towards the left. As a result of this, the bead experiences an equal and opposite force towards the right. This is like the Newton's third law. The bead pushes the light towards the left by the phenomenon of refraction and it itself experiences force towards the right. Higher the intensity of light, more will be the number of photons and more will be the force experienced by the bead. This is the reason why we use high intensity laser for optical tweezing. Now if the laser is focused using a convex lens and the bead is just below the focal point then something amazing happens. The bead is refracting the light towards the bottom and by doing so, it experiences net force towards the top. At this stage, the bead is now trapped by the laser and it can be mowed in any direction using the laser. Now, instead of bead, you can also have any cell or cell organelle trapped using the laser. And of course, if the intensity of laser is high, then it might cause permanent damage to the cells or cell organelle which is trapped. Now let's see the schematic diagram of optical tweezing instrument. We have a sample cell where the sample is held. At the bottom, we have a source of light and a convex lens to focus the light. On the top, we have an objective lens, just like the objective lens of a microscope. Further on the top, we have two beam splitters. One of them directs the light towards the eyepiece where the user can see the specimen. And the second one directs the light towards the video camera where the digital image of the specimen can be taken. On the top, we have the laser and the laser passes through the beam splitters, get focused by the objective and traps the specimen in the focal point. Now let's see how optical tweezers can be used for the measurement of molecular forces. Whenever a particle or bead is trapped by the optical tweezer, the trapped particle behaves like a spring. What I mean is, if the external force is applied, then the bead will undergo displacement because of the external force and it will attain position where the external force balances the optical force. If the external force is removed, then the bead will come back to its original position. So this whole system is behaving like a spring. The external force causes displacement and in its absence, the bead comes back to its original position. This external force is usually applied using a flow cell. Now according to spring equation, which is F is equal to Kx, F is the external force, K is the spring constant of the optical trap and X is the displacement. Because this external force is applied using a flow cell, this force is actually the force due to viscosity 
which is 6 pi eta r v. This is nothing but the Stokes law of viscosity. Your eta is the coefficient of viscosity, r is the radius of bead, v is the velocity of water flowing to the flow cell. Using this, we can now calculate the spring constant k of the optical tweezer. Once the spring constant k is calculated, we can now measure any type of force just by measuring the displacement of the bead. Let's see this with an example. The RNA polymerase is immobilized on glass slide and one end of the DNA is attached with the bead. Addition of buffer containing ribonucleotides will start RNA polymerization or the process of transcription. As the transcription continues, the RNA polymerase pulls the DNA as well as the bead with which the end of DNA is attached. Here the RNA polymerase is pulling the bead towards the left. Because of the force of RNA polymerase, the bead undergoes displacement and it reaches a point where the force generated by RNA polymerase becomes equal to the optical force. And just by measuring the displacement of the bead, the force generated by RNA polymerase can be estimated. According to this data, the maximum force generated by RNA polymerase is about 9 piconewtons. In a similar way, any of such molecular forces can be estimated.